Hey, thanks for joining us this week on Inside the Story. I'm here with our policy team. We've got Alex Deese and Killian Laverty, both from our policy team. And we're going to talk about everything that's going on with Mar-a-Lago and the FBI raid and kind of anything in general with American politics today. Guys, what's happened in the past week since the FBI went and raided former President Trump's Florida residence at Mar-a-Lago? I've seen uh, video on the news, tons of protesters out there. People are pretty upset about this. Uh, it's a pretty big attack by the deep state on you know the rule of law in America today. Alex, what are your thoughts? Well, last Monday, the FBI executed a search warrant on the Mar-a-Lago property. Uh, we've got the search warrant right here. It was released uh, last Thursday by the court. The Department of Justice uh, filed documents with the court asking the court to release uh, the search warrant. The president former President Trump allowed the search warrant uh, to come out. Uh, many members of the media also asked for it to come out. So uh, that got released. It said that they were interested in presidential records. They were interested in uh, violations of possibly the Espionage Act. Mm -hmm. uh, the warrant asked for, and I'll just, we'll just quote here directly from the warrant. Uh, any government and or presidential records created between January 20th, 2017 and January 20th, 2021, any evidence of the knowing alteration, destruction, or concealment of any government and or presidential records or any documents with classification so, warnings. Okay, so classified documents, can't the president himself actually declassify documents? Can't he just say when he walked out of the White House that he declassified these? I thought that's what I saw, Killian. Yeah, uh, I mean, that, that's being said. I, it's truly astonishing, though, looking at this, that the apparently the FBI thought that they wouldn't get any media coverage or that they could fly under the radar if they did it during a, a Monday afternoon when you're going to, to, to go and raid the, the home of a former president. Like the, 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 the tone deafness of the, the FBI here and the, the lack of self-awareness is truly astonishing mm -hmm. and layering on top of that that President Biden didn't know about it mm -hmm. and apparently didn't know that Attorney General Garland was going to be making a statement last week. This is just a, a, an absolute mess for the administration. Sure. And I'm not one to say that, you know, there's always like this grand plan. Like that's I think you kind of get into conspiracy theory t territory when you say, oh, there's always some kind of plan for these things that they're always, uh, you know, laid out and people know what they're doing. We've all worked in D.C. for a little bit now, and we know that there usually isn't a plan. Uh, it's a lot of day to day uh, action on how you react to things. But it's just interesting looking at how the timing matches up on this with how the the Senate had just passed the Inflation Reduction Act right before. That's a major win for President Biden legislatively. He'd been starved for wins in Congress. It, it seems to me it could have almost been a way for him to capitalize on that and shift the focus back to Trump for the midterms because, uh, you know, Democrats have been doing pretty poorly. They want to focus on Trump. They want to run against Trump, and this is a perfect way to do that. It, it, Your thoughts? It's, it's almost weird because – you would think that that would be this giant win. And so this kind of distracts from that win. So if anything, that mm -hmm. that almost supports the argument that he didn't know that this was going to happen. Sure. Uh, but, you know, here, according to the search warrant, you know, this was filed with the court on August 5th, and they didn't actually execute the warrant until the 8th. So, you know, the Senate, I think, passed it on the 5th, right? Mm -hmm. And then they executed it on the 8th, and then the signing ceremony was, I guess, a few days ago. But this, was the, this has been the only thing in the news. Like the Inflation Reduction Act has just completely fallen out of proportion. Nobody even cares that it happened. Mm -hmm. And I think they were also talking about how this might undermine the J6 hearings that we've been seeing. Yeah. What were you going to say? I mean, those are easy to undermine. I mean, it, it's <laughs> made for TV. I mean, A little friendly fire going on there. <laughs> Um, it, like, the, it's been an absolute debacle, I, the, this administration in general. I, the, the, the idea that there is some big grand plan is can be written off just by looking at the, the man that's in charge of the White House right now. This has been one mess sure, after another. Do you think he, there's a plan? Yeah, do, <laughs> he doesn't <laughs> even remember his own name. I, yeah. You think he's going to be able to, to orchestrate yeah. the, the, this, this attack? But it, it's insane it is absolutely insane mm -hmm. uh but speaking of the j6 hearings uh liz cheney last night uh predictably lost her primary yeah you could call it a loss yeah, yeah, yeah. It, was, it was a blowout it was clobbering she, she lost almost every county i think all but one was the it one. like jackson hole maybe or yeah yeah like the, one. <laughs> it was. the one blue area uh, besides probably like uh, uh uh laramie where the university of wyoming is uh I lost everything. I think she lost by like what, like close to thirty-five percent. Yeah, and like she only got like forty thousand votes or something like that. It, mm -hmm. it was an absolute and, and you said blowout. That's, that's with 
Democrats crossing over right. to vote for her in the primary. That's a blowout loss. I mean, you're a representative. You're supposed to be representing your constituency. Wyoming only has one because there's like half a million people that live there. Yeah. Right. It's a tiny state. Like, I probably know a large percentage of people who live there <laughs> combined, compared to other states. Um, that is, like, just goes to show, like, that is a huge loss. Like, you obviously do not know anything, or I mean, you maybe do, but you obviously don't care about your district if you're getting blown out by those kind of margins. Well, it's not only that, right? I mean, her father and her mother both lived there. They grew up there. I mean, Dick, mm-hmm. Cheney, Rick, Dick Cheney used to have that seat in Congress before he was tapped to run the Department of Defense by George H.W. Bush. Mm-hmm. So it's not like they're unfamiliar with uh, Wyoming politics or people are unfamiliar in Wyoming with the Cheney dynasty. Sure. But this is another dynasty that President Trump has essentially, you know, terminated right the bush dynasty was first Mm -hmm. clinton dynasty was second and now we're on this the cheney dynasty is third Mm -hmm. i mean did you see vice yeah i (laughs) we should get christian bale's opinion on this it's like a bunch of progressives huddled around a campfire talking about the uh ghost story of the evils of dick cheney (laughs) yeah (laughs) well it's like some of these articles that they're coming out with uh you know all these democrats coming and falling in in line behind a Cheney. It's like, can you imagine printing those out and showing them to someone from 2006? Just yeah. Like the, the, just the tone of how things have changed. Like, I, I grew up in Maryland where you had the, uh, like, uh, join the mob, the mothers against Bush. Mm-hmm. And it was vehemently, you know, anti Cheney. Like, he was like literally the devil to them. And now you have all these Democrats falling in line behind uh, Liz Cheney simply because she's the one who's actually doing the Democrats bidding, you know, whether it's a J6 committee or just saying she's going to prevent Trump from running ever again. Uh, maybe there's a book deal in the future after her failed presidential 2024 bid, something like that. Where, where do you kind of see it going next for Cheney? Well, I mean, the worst Republican on the Democrat side, the worst Republican is always the next one. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> <laughs> like, I mean, Trump, Trump is the worst thing since Bush and Bush was the worst thing since it's always, yeah. oh, let's go back to the good old days. And I'm sure Ron DeSantis is going to get the same treatment. If, I mean, he, he already if, is. Yeah, I, <laughs> he's worse than Trump. I, yeah. it, it, it is going back insane. all the way to Reagan. Oh, Reagan was Hitler. Like, yeah, OK. Sure. <laughs> yeah, and you know, maybe Liz Cheney runs for president. Like, good luck for her. Uh, she can't even win her own home, home state within her own party. Like, it, it is ridiculous. Maybe she and like Larry Hogan can do like a unity ticket. Uh, yeah. I wonder which one would be uh, the vice president there. Um, but, a- anyways, uh, other governors. We have Ron DeSantis going on tour around the country, and stumping for some Trump candidates actually. Yeah. Uh, going around, I think he's going to be in uh, Nevada mm-hmm. for Adam Laxalt, who's running for Senate. Uh, he's going to be in Arizona, stumping for Blake Masters, I believe. Also. And, and Carrie Lake. And Carrie Lake, yep. so two there. And then also uh, Killian, Pennsylvania, as a Pennsylvania <laughs> native. Or, yeah. Pennsylvania, yeah. Or Jer- Pennsylvania, Pennsylvania right? Okay, that's Pennsylvania. right. Yeah, yeah. I thought Jersey first. No, it's <laughs> no, Jack. <Jack's> from Jersey. <laughs> uh, and Doug Mastriano, the governor candidate governor. in Pennsylvania. But not, not uh, Oz. Not Dr. Oz. Reportedly, yeah. Okay. What, what's well, your... Dr. Oz is still stuck at that Wegmans. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> he's, he's picking up the broccoli. Yeah, it's twenty dollars for the big feast. For, you know? for the kombucha yeah. or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't. know. What do you guys think about Oz in general? Yeah, I, he, interesting candidate. Um, I mean, he's the he's the Republican nominee. I think at the end of the day, he's going to end up winning. I think this is a classic case of Democrats winning all the polls and the the Republican pulling it out in the uh, on election day. I mean, that's what we saw in twenty twenty and loads of House and Senate races. Um, so we'll see there. Um, he's uh, he's certainly a, a, an enigmatic candidate. I mean, this is a, a, a New York TV host essentially. Mm-hmm. Who's branding himself as a, as a MAGA conservative? We'll mm-hmm. see how it goes. Hopefully, I his opponent is a nut job. John Fetterman is an absolute socialist nut. Shrek. Socialist Shrek. Right, so Did, we'll see. hasn't Oz like not even said anything about the search on Mar-a-Lago? Like he's been totally silent, hasn't he, on this? I think. Yeah, after he won the primary, he stripped all Trump branding from his uh, his website, oh, all his mailers, everything like that. Yeah, went hard to the the middle there. DeSantis so. is also uh, campaigning for J.D. Vance in Ohio. So. Vance, yeah, he need, yeah, I think he needs some help. Yeah, so. uh, it'll be – it'll be. Uh, I, I mean, I'd, I'd put a lot more money on Vance winning than Dr. Oz winning. Uh, but well, that's safe. Yeah. 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 Um, well, I think that, like, uh, Tim Ryan's a tougher opponent uh, compared to Fetterman. Uh, Tim Ryan, a uh, Democratic congressman who's been around for a while, challenged, uh, I think, Pelosi for the speakership – last uh, yeah, couple, that's right. couple that's times right. around. That's right. Uh, but definitely see that as a tougher opponent. 
Um, but what do you guys think about DeSantis himself going on this tour here? I mean, obviously, there's tons of speculation about uh, Governor, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis running in 2024. Do you think this is a way to, you know, get close enough to, you know, Trump and everything, say, hey, I'm out here supporting your candidates, uh, but just to maintain just enough distance? Well, I mean, it's a mini campaign for him, right? I mean, he's going to sure. Arizona, right? He's going to Ohio, right? He's going to Pennsylvania. I mean, those aren't random states that people just decide to visit for a campaign. Sure. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would say it's like a te- I mean, he's almost introducing himself to these voters, right? Name because they don't actually, for. right, because they don't know, I mean, other than he's a really good governor, they don't really know much more about the guy. And I think that's what you see in a lot of the polls where you see, oh, Trump taking 70% of the potential 2024 right. vote. I mean, you got to think about a lot of people don't know who Ron DeSantis is, don't know who any of these other people are. And who doesn't know who you know, Donald Trump is in a Republican Absolutely. primary? But it'll be really interesting to see uh, if those numbers shift kind of as we get closer to 2024. Who knows, Trump could announce he's running for president again tomorrow. Well, and what's interesting about these particular candidates, you know, DeSantis stayed out of all of those primaries, unlike Ted Cruz, for example, who endorsed against Donald Trump in many of these primaries. Mm. And so it's kind of interesting that he was radio silent on all of these, you know, kind of major primary races. But now he's going to stump for all these candidates, mostly ones that Trump all endorsed and won. Mm. So, yep. And as we know, with uh, Trump endorsements, can be day before. Do do you think those really count when it's uh, a? No, they do not count. I mean, both Eric's. (laughs) Yeah, both Eric's. I endorse Eric. (laughs) That was ridiculous. Yeah. Well, I mean, Kate Britton, Alabama, I mean, he had endorsed Mo Brooks for like a year and a half, and then Mo Brooks apparently went soft on the J6 stuff, which is incredible because Mo Brooks actually spoke at the same rally that Trump spoke at on J6. Mm -hmm. But that aside, Mo Brooks apparently went soft on J6, and then Trump endorsed Kate Britt, who he said was a rhino. And then he counts that as a win. So I I don't... We should have a a audit his... uh Endorsement his, his endorsements and you come up with like a true endorsement record like a true yeah. win and loss you got there. a lot of like incumbents that are going to win by like 80 percent in there and yeah uh, so well, like does he, it have to be more than 24 hours well before he, count, the, he counted like Jer- <laughs> jerry moran and tim scott it's like they didn't have anybody to run against them like that that doesn't that can't count as a win sure like that's not a real race well i mean at the end of the day the only two endorsements that really matter for Republican candidates are Ron DeSantis and Donald Trump. These are far and away the, the two most popular figures, most prominent figures in the Republican Party. Mm-hmm. And if you're going to have anyone stump for you, it, it makes no sense to have it be anyone other than those two figures. I, I completely agree. And Dick Cheney. Oh, oh, oh wait, he lost. <laughs> How'd that work? Sorry. All those advertisements on Fox News he bought up. Not, Talking uh, straight into the camera. None of those worked, I guess. Shooter's little girl. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Uh, Well, that's all the time we have for this week. Uh, Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you again next week.